Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to offer condolences to the family and friends of Representative Mark Takai, who passed away this morning uh, at his home uh, with his family. Uh, Mark was a model. He was an inspiration to many. And he was a true representative of and for the people, and he will be missed. So let's take a quick moment of silence for him before we move on. As you can see, Mark has appeared on Think Tech uh, Hawaii I know, a number of times. Uh, here, you can see here with uh, Jay Fidel, Community Matters. Uh, he, again, he was a great representative for the people and he was available. He made himself available uh, to everyone and he would look people in the eyes and listen to them. And that was, I think, the greatest thing I learned from him is remember to listen. So, okay. Okay, so, all right, back into our show. So, welcome to another episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Many people believe that education can be the silver bullet or the linchpin that could help solve problems like homelessness, drug addiction, social division, and income inequality. And in Hawaii, where our many intertwined cultures cherish our keiki and do all we can to open doors for their successes, we assume that a high priority is placed on having a world-class educational system. But is it? On this show, we talk about the programs available to our keiki, the quality of our facilities and infrastructure, addressing deferred maintenance, increasing the number of cool rooms for our keiki and teachers, a more comprehensive curriculum approach, as well as appropriately recognizing and valuing our teachers and administrative staff. And perhaps most importantly, what life and career opportunities are we providing for our keiki to thrive today and into the future? Welcome to the show. Today's guest is Ms. Chelsea Harder from Hawaii Energy, specifically Chelsea is a market transformation specialist. We're going to learn a bit what that means. Uh, today we'll be talking about energy education for students and teachers from pre-K through PhD, as well as the RISE program and much more. So again, welcome to the show. And welcome, Chelsea. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. It's good to um, be here. I'm losing my little earphone, but it's all right. Um, all right, so and also um, thanks for joining us on this day when, when we have to remember a representative Mark Takai. He meant a lot to a lot of people, so I appreciate you being here of course. Um, today as well. Um, all right, so tell us a little bit about, first let's start about yourself. What's, uh, what's your background? And tell us a little bit then about your job. Sure. Um, I'm a former um, engineer and educator from Minnesota. Um, I came over here after my service in the Peace Corps when I um, fell in love with education and became an educator. Oh, so excellent. I worked at um, grades 4 through 20 in the STEM subjects, so um, science, technology, engineering, engineering and math. math. Exactly. That's a huge, important area. We know of its importance. It's become so important to so many people that they're almost excluding other things, which I think is kind of a problem. So you being a STEM person, give us your quick thought on if you would. Well, I, I very much appreciate the STEM fields. Um, they're, they're very important, especially with all this um, increase in technology. Yeah. But there's also components that are being missed, like yeah. the arts, the music, and um, physical education, being outside. Uh, so I think that integrating everything is really what we need to do. I understand the focus, but um, in that, we need to inspire others to, to get on the bandwagon. Also because there are different ways of learning. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So providing kids different opportunities, you get to learn more what they're good at, mm -hmm. so we can you know, try to get behind them and support them in those areas. Right, right. right. So if they have a passion in the arts or a passion in um, literature, they, yeah. can, they can be the storyteller or the, someone who makes this inspiring piece that gets people to, to be that change. Excellent. So we both share a Midwest lineage. Exactly. Uh, so we get that. Uh, back in my day, uh, I was required to have physical education every day. Me too. Uh, you too. Okay. Yep. It does, it's not that way today. Really? Today they have uh, maybe two, three times a week. It depends. Okay. They do other things. So it's interesting. That's one of the things that they don't do every day. Um, but anyway, 
so yeah, so yeah, we do share that Midwest. I'm originally from Chicago. Um, okay, so first of all, thank you for being an educator. And what I have learned over the years, first of all, and then over the past several months of doing the show, is the educators are people who are passionate about the idea of teaching, passionate about helping students achieve. Absolutely. Well, I come from a long line of educators. Um, my parents, um, siblings, aunts, uncles, grandparents. Um, it's just, it's in our blood. We're, we're really motivated to help grow and develop people into they, what they want to be. That's excellent. That's excellent. So, well, thank you for doing that. But you're not doing that right now. I'm not. I'm actually, um, so my role at Hawaii Energy is the market transformation specialist. So um, back up a little bit, Hawaii Energy is the energy efficiency and conservation program. Yes. So what we do for the state is we educate, motivate, and incentivize people to adopt energy efficiency practices. That's in connection with the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, our 100% clean energy goal by 2045, which is one of the most aggressive goals, if not the aggressive most aggressive in um, in our nation. It is, and it requires a combination of energy efficiency, which is what Hawaii Energy works on, as well as renewables. Absolutely. So the energy efficiency will help increase that renewable integration. So our demand right now is so large, the amount of energy that we're using. Mm -hmm. We need to bring that down so that we don't have to integrate so many new renewables. Right, right. Years, I've, I spent years as well in the renewable energy area, and I, I know that every time we would go into a new facility and talk with them about a potential solar idea for them, we always would begin with that initial assessment about, well, okay, what can we reduce? Because mm -hmm. honestly, your load is so large, we're not able to put as enough panels on your roof. We can't put enough PV panels on your roof to really address your full load. So what can we reduce to really make this, you know, the most positive impact? For right, you? a common so. problem. And then it also, um, you know, there's a lot of solar energy coming in during the day, but at night you need to pull from the grid. So if you have a lot of panels, it does offset the grid as well. So another reason to go um, energy efficient. Exactly, exactly. No, that's wonderful. I know there's a lot of... Uh, technology as well as a lot of equipment these days that are more energy efficient and I know that one of the programs that Hawaii Energy has offered is uh, if your refrigerator is of, of a certain age you'll take it and like give us 50 bucks I think. Absolutely uh, yeah the, the older the refrigerator is yeah the, yeah. the more load it's going to pull so yeah. if you um, if you upgrade to a new efficient program or a new efficient uh, refrigerator we have a program where we'll either take your old one or we'll give you money to swap out for a new one. Sure sure so. sure and that's great I, I, I know for a fact this works um, because they took one of my refrigerators away and uh, they sent me $50, so it was really nice. Yep. Appreciate, appreciated that. So, um, so yes, definitely look into that, Hawaii Energy. Um, all right, so tell us a bit more. Let's learn a bit more about Hawaii Energy. Let's learn a bit more about some of the educational aspects and programs. Or, or Let's start with the programs and sure, go into the education. Sure, sure. Because yep. it really crosses. Absolutely. Yeah. To, so to finish my thought on uh, market transformation, it is um, essentially strategic interventions to change the market. So what we're doing is looking at what's there, what kind of market channels are existing, and how do we leverage those resources and those collaborators to make a bigger, a bigger impact. So That's a lot of words. <laughs> I, under I understood that. However, how can you rephrase that in, in smaller words, in smaller, less jargon words? Sure. So um, we are we are the helpers with the you know, with the tools to help um, shape the system to better to better help people be more energy efficient. So <laughs> yes. that's a lot of words. A as market well. <laughs> market transformation. So you're trying to find opportunities, funding opportunities. You're trying to find. Um, technology opportunities, you're right. trying to find a number of ways to bring about a better solution for the general public to bring energy costs down. Absolutely, absolutely. So through and, all those means. Mm -hmm, and focus on collaboration as well. We have a lot of wonderful programs in Hawaii here, mm -hmm. and um, they may be siloed, they may start to be integrated, but we want to make sure that things are streamlined so we can help Hawaii the best we can achieve our goals. How, um, and maybe you can't speak to this, but um, I know some people are, are curious about how, um, how Hawaii Energy came to be um, and, and how it's funded. Sure. Um, so originally it was part of HECO, and um, it was the energy efficiency component with um, education as well. And it split off into Hawaii Energy in t 2009. So we are, a, um, we are a separate entity from, from HECO at this time. 
and we are under the direction of the PUC. So we get our money from ratepayers. So anybody that pays an electric bill, whether you're a business, large, medium, small, or an institution or a resident, you have a small surcharge at the bottom of your bill, and that's 1.5%. So that small portion goes to the Public Utilities Commission, which then gives us um, some of that money to run our programs. So essentially, we're all paying for Hawaii Energy to exist. Yes. And for the programs. So if we aren't taking advantage of the programs, then we're not we're getting any out. money back. <laughs> yeah. So all the money we're paying in through our bill, we would be getting some back if we take advantage of your program. Yes, it would behoove everyone to, to be a part of this program. Okay. Give me a listing of, I don't know, your, your top couple favorite programs that you have. Uh, well, the refrigerator exchange ones, but I'm, I'm particularly um, have favorites in the the market transformation sector. So okay. we have uh, we focus on education. We have a, a fellowship program. We have a teacher training program. Um, yeah, a multitude of things. So excellent. That was the perfect transition that I was hoping for. <laughs> As we move into the reason you're here is not to talk about Hawaii Energy and energy is to talk about how this plays a role in education. Yes, uh, education for our kids education for our teachers and education for our community mm -hmm. and that sort of encompasses all of that right yes um, so okay um, let's okay what are what are what are those programs called are there names are there titles of those programs sure sure we'll start with the fellowship program we just call it the Hawaii Energy Fellowship mm -hmm. um, so we take college students and recent recent graduates uh, we and we give them experience in the energy industry it is an aging workforce we have a lot of people that are getting ready to retire and nobody to fill in, or not enough people to fill in those gaps yeah. and a lot of complaints that we get from um, people in any industry they're saying our students are aren't prepared enough for to be in the job and to be in the workforce so what we want to do is give them that real world education that's excellent in that's addition excellent. to that and academic that's the, education. through the rise program correct? yes through kupu rise they're excellent, excellent partners um, rise stands for rewarding internships for sustainable employment that's spectacular okay so that's great we'll go into that a bit more um, so what are some of the other programs that you've got well, we, we have a teacher education program. Mm -hmm. We collaborate with the National Energy Education Development Project, so need to be short. Um, National Energy Education Project. Development Project. Development Project. Yes, ne yes. Need P. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we just call it need, <laughs> to be simple. Probably better than that. Right, right. They have over 35 years' experience of, um, of developing energy education, whether it be for efficiency, for renewables, and um, it's, it's very robust, and they help people not only bring it into the class, Classrooms, but take it out of the classrooms and into the community. So they've been excellent partners in, in some things that we want to okay. do here. Is it part of the energy challenge that my kids bring home? Is that part of that, or is that a different program? It could be a different program. There are a number of different um, of different programs, and what we're working to do, uh, we just started our, our new fiscal year, is we want to get all these different um, collaborators and partners together and make sure that we streamline these things. So when um, when teachers and students and parents get energy education materials, they're, they're not saying, oh, I already got that, or oh, I got something similar to this. We want to make sure that things are new and fresh and helpful right. for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, every year for the past several years, um, my kids bring home a document that they're supposed to keep track of what we're doing this week mm -hmm. to reduce our energy usage. Right, like a like an ongoing audit. Yes. So they come and like, okay, did we turn the lights off? Did we? Uh, did, did, is the refrigerator plugged in? Yeah, it is still plugged in. Okay, good. Um, did we uh, turn the TVs off all the way? Are the computers turned off? And so we go through the checklist of all of these things to make sure that we have reduced our certainly our overnight load. That's great. As well, so uh, that's I know that that comes home every year. Okay, so. we have a program very similar to that. It might just be that program. It I might. I think it's related because I, I think your logo is on it. So I think you're connected to that. Good, so. good. So okay, so that's one of the ways that you reach and teach the kids. So we're going to take a quick break, mm -hmm. and then we're going to come back. We're going to talk more about each of these programs. Okay. Great. All right. All right. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, this is Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host Carl Campagna, and today we have with us Miss Chelsea Harder from Hawaii Energy. See you in a minute. Watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to youtube.com, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Hi, I'm Ray Starling, and I am co host for Hawaii's Wednesday afternoon State of Clean Energy. And with me today is Leslie Cole Brooks, and she's going to tell you what's happening this month with our shows. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie Cole Brooks, the Executive Director of the Distributed Energy Resources Council. And this month is the focus is on distributed energy resources. We just had a great show on smart grid technologies, and the rest of the month we're going to discuss storage, different strategies, microgrids, and then we're going to have live man and woman on the street from Verge. So it's really exciting, very informative, um, lively, and just worth doing. So. See you next Wednesday. Thank you. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Once again, we have Ms. Chelsea Harder from Hawaii Energy uh, here with us today, talking about how we are educating our children and our teachers and our community uh, on education, for, or on energy education. So, okay. Um, so again, thank you for joining us. Thank I appreciate you. it. And uh, so let's learn, tell us about the fellowship program. So through Kupu Rise, you're bringing in students and your your how does the program work how long of a program is it what is required uh, for these students to participate can tell us about that if you will. sure sure so um first of all we collaborate with kupu rise because they're um a very robust internship program they offer different um they they focus on different um areas of sectors of students so high school students college students high um high-risk, low-income students, and we work with the RISE program, which works with um, very high-performing uh, college students and recent graduates. So what is required is um, they go through, a, through an interview process, and um, we, we want to know their passion for energy. Okay. So what we, and then... Um, so high-performing high is what I heard. So we're not talking about C students here. Right, right. We're, we're I, not I'm talking about people who are just, uh, they, they have to be... They have to be students who are either graduate level or bachelor level. Is there a difference? It will both? Both will suffice, both yes. Will suffice. And they can be recent graduates as well. So okay. graduating okay. from college or from a graduate program as well. Is it directly out of UH or the UH program? Or are there any? Any school. So we have some students from HPU, from UH. It doesn't matter. I, that's excellent. Yeah. You want to make sure that you're including as many. About um, how many? of these interns do you have in any, any given time? About eight. So okay. we, um, we roll on a, on a yearly cycle. So okay. we just started our fiscal year this year. Last year we had eight fantastic fellows and the year before we, we had fantastic fellows as well. So right. And it's a year-long program? It is. And how much time are they expected to put in? They, they put in about part-time, so up to um, 19 hours per week. And they Ooh. usually, yeah. In addition to classwork and everything else. Yeah, they're pretty amazing. So that's, again, high-performing. Yep, to, exactly. You have to know how to manage your time. Mm -hmm. So, which is a, one of the actually most important skills of your bachelor's degree. Actually. Right, right. The, in addition <laughs> to, to having energy industry experience, they also get those um, yes. mentorship and real life work experience. Uh, which is huge, huge. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now what can you tell me of the statistics as far as the fellows who have come through the program and then have gone on? to an energy-related job. You have, I don't know if you have those statistics. Um, I know that Kupu Rise as a whole, over 50% have gone into energy fields directly. So some, um, I would love to get stats from them. Well, well, I'm gonna have them here in a couple of weeks, actually. I'm Wonderful. Gonna, I'm gonna have one of them here specifically, and they'll tell us more of those details. I'm, I'm hoping, I think, um, Hayden, I think, is coming in. Good. Uh, so we're hoping to learn a lot more from Hayden. Um, so, okay, so we've got about eight students. It's about a year-long program at about 19 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm just trying to envision that when I was in college and I was taking four or five classes at a time and what it took to do all of the work necessary uh, and then still have, you know, a friend or two. Right. <laughs> I think you I forego think sleep the might go out the window. <laughs> you lose, you're like, oh, we're working on four hours of sleep and we're good. Training yourself early, so okay. Um, all right, so it's a successful program. How long has that program been around? Um, this is and it's, how long has it been in collaboration? I should say with Hawaii Energy. Sure, sure. So I started at um, I started at Hawaii Energy a little over three years ago. So it's been going strong for three years. Oh wow! So is it is it your program or is it is? Excellent. See now that's that's why she's here today <laughs> uh, because we wanted to learn about this. So this is spectacular. So you're taking college students, graduate students, and you're integrating them into the job market. 
Absolutely. So what we do is when we when we interview these students, we try to understand where their passion lies within the energy industry. So I really want to focus on behavior change or outreach or the technical inspection side. So we listen to that and we want to encourage their participation in those things that we do. We have some that are and we give everybody a couple tasks so they can they can um, shift the way they want to as they get the experience. So we have um, some that are working on a community based marketing campaign so a lot of uh, behavior change that they're focusing on understanding the psychology behind like why why aren't you changing out your shower head yeah. um, and we're working with um, hard to reach sectors so those sectors that we it's hard to penetrate and understand their um, their behaviors sure. Uh, sure. we also do uh, work with our small business direct install program for small businesses and restaurants so um, I think aside from teachers, they're some of the busiest people I've ever met, and politicians, I'm sure, too. But, um, but some, some of them are busier than others. <laughs> but they don't have time to fill out a rebate and even to get money back. They're saying, I... I don't have the. I don't have any time. So what we do is we um, we work with a contractor and then we'll we'll pay it completely and they'll get new lighting that will reduce their energy bill. Another amazing benefit that we all pay for already. Right. So take advantage of it. Is the recommendation. <laughs> um, so okay, great so, great program. That's that's exciting to know that there are opportunities uh, for students to be engaged in this. Um, yes, high performing students, but it's still it, it's an incentive to be a high performing student, to know that you're going to get this kind of experience, which is important when it comes to what your next job is going to be, or after after you've completed your degree, what job can you get, and you can point to this experience. Right, and there are a lot of mentorship and um, networking um, components as well. So yes. they get to work with other different RISE cohorts um, yes. around the islands, and they get to speak to represent, or um, they get to speak to professionals that will come in and give talks. So that's excellent. That's excellent. Okay, now let's jump. Uh, let's jump in. We've uh, about five minutes or so we have left. Okay. <laughs> um, let's jump into the next piece of this, which is the the teacher um, and outreach and and student other student uh, educational facets. So tell us more about about that program what it is, how it works. Sure, so our teacher training program in collaboration with the NEED Project is, uh, it started as um, a teacher training, just workshops, um, it's a full day, teachers would come in, get substitute reimbursement, we feed them, and we give them training and materials to bring into their classroom. Um, so they can, a lot of teachers are saying, energy is such a big deal, but we don't, we don't know how to teach it. So we, we fast track them and say, we're going to make it easy for you, integrate this into your classroom. So we is want... There, is there a subject matter? that they teach that is that, that relates to more? How We've, does that work out? Um, a lot of teachers that are interested are in um, in the STEM fields, a lot of okay. science teachers, but okay. it is for all subjects. You can integrate that into language arts, into music even, so it's yes. for K through 12 teachers. That's definitely a STEM thing, but I can definitely see. So it's K through 12 specifically. Yes, yes. So, so teachers this is can a program, so you're teaching the teachers mm -hmm. how to teach about energy. Yes. Which as we have talked on the show before, we expect a lot out of our teachers. We expect them to know so much, um, as I've mentioned before, yeah, how to recognize uh, uh, um, an epileptic seizure, how to recognize if there's a vision challenge, how to recognize concerns, uh, whether they be drug-related concerns or, or other behavior concerns. We expect this out of our teachers. And oh, by the way, they're also supposed to be teaching a class. So that's one of the things that I, you know, I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And teachers do it. Obviously, it comes from the heart mm -hmm. when they teach. As you mentioned, it's in your family, it's in your blood. Um, but it's one of the things we need to recognize our teachers for. And that's why I'm one of the people who believes they, they need much more respect. So, all righty. So, um, a couple minutes left. One thing I, I see, I see a little note on there. I want you to make a mention of your megawatt moment, please. Sure, sure. So every Wednesday, um, we will have uh, Hawaii Energy. We'll have someone on here from at four o'clock for about five minutes talking about a different program within Hawaii Energy. So tune in to Jay Fidel's show, Think Tech Hawaii. All right, all right, excellent. Good to get a good plug in there, especially for Think Tech. <laughs> um, okay, now let's go back a little bit to how this. So you're teaching the teachers, and they're bringing them into the. What teachers? Uh, I, it's, it's it's really just whatever teachers are interested. Whatever teachers are interested, we really we want to stoke that fire and then encourage their. So there's passion not a requirement. Forward. Each there school isn't. doesn't need to have at least one or five or. Nope. Okay. It's Could for there be everyone? 
should there be? I, I want to open up to all teachers. Um, and then something what we want to do is connect more directly to homes as well. So teachers, we make it easy for them to integrate it into their classroom. The kids are, by the way, extremely excited. They'll go home instead of saying, what'd you do at, uh, at school today? Oh, I know. Nothing. That one I know. <laughs> That's so like, I have a checklist. I'm going to see how you're doing. Right, oh, right. <laughs> okay. And one of our programs mm -hmm. does offer um, a home energy kit in addition to their curriculum. So not only the teacher gets a kit, but all the kids get to bring a kit home and install things with their parents, like so faucet aerators and light bulbs. This is how we change the future. Right. This is how we advise the future. And the kids are our future. We inform them early, get them involved, get them engaged, give them some sort of a practical application for what some of this is, so that as they grow, as they really get there, they start to see paths. Paths for a career and paths for choices to make. Right. Whether it's you know, going towards renewable energy p jobs and opportunities or biofuels or your job, mm -hmm. working with the state or working with Hawaii Energy or working with other organizations that are uh, really directed towards technologies and innovation, but giving the kids an understanding that, look, there's a path here. Right. There's a career path here as well as a choice a lifestyle path to a certain extent with that as well. So that's yeah, part and of the re you know that's like like that's what you're there for. You right, know, right. It's the guts of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah. the meat of it. So um, one thing we do is we really encourage leadership in the students. We have um, these community events where students will actually lead an energy carnival, have different booths set around the school, and have parents and um, community members come in, and the kids will teach them about energy. This is how you can save energy. See, that's the best way. Once you have them teaching, now you know they're really learning. Right, right. And they're a lot more compelling to listen to well, than they adults. Because <laughs> they're more cute. That's yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, well, excellent. So, alrighty. So, last, uh, last thoughts. What do you want to make sure we leave uh, this interview uh, knowing? And is there anything that we haven't hit that you want to make sure that we are aware of? I, I really wanted to hit the component about the teachers and um, to go to community events um, that students are hosting within their schools to learn about how to save energy. You can always visit hawaiienergy.com to learn more. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, I would love to have you come back another time. We can dig deeper into some of these ideas. And um, what I would like to dig deeper into, uh, perhaps on a different show, uh, is is the policy drivers that are behind some of this and what can be done. As I mentioned, well, should we have the teachers really be more involved? Should we require an energy coordinator at each school uh, that's involved with teaching as well as making sure that the school is more sustainable? I know that the University of Hawaii has a st sustainable coordinator, Matt Lynch, who's going to be on the show in, uh, in a few weeks. Uh, and he'll tell us about what he's doing at UH, and it's wonderful. Um, so, so at some point, I'd love to have you come back. We could talk more about a lot of these different areas. I'd love to. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate thank that. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Uh, think Tech Hawaii, education movers, shakers, and reformers. Um, I will not be here next week, um, but I'm sure that we're going to have an amazing program here, probably uh, Jay Fidel or, or someone else. But I apologize that I'll be gone for one week, but I will return the week after. So have a great couple of weeks, and I'll see you soon. Mahalo.